Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and I'm really excited to make this video today and show you a fantastic new product called the Sports Screen. Now if you haven't seen the Sports Screen before, uh, basically what it is, is it's a shooting tarp. It mounts over any standard two car garage. There's actually three different ways that you can mount it. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go down uh, throughout the video. But uh, you can mount it over any standard two car garage and then basically it allows you to shoot pucks at it, throw lacrosse balls, uh, practice your baseball pitching. Um, I've even heard of people that actually they, they lower it down and put it over their garage like you're supposed to but then they go inside the garage and actually shoot golf balls from the inside of the garage out towards the sports screen so that way you know even if they you know it kind of protects you against the the random shank if you if you happen to shank it hit your neighbor's car or something you don't want to do that um, so they go inside the garage and actually shoot out into the sports screen so it kind of makes for some uh, you know some indoor practice indoor golf practice you can you know do that in the winter or whatever um, so a lot of different ways you can use the sports screen and one of the biggest things that sets the sports screen apart from you know some of your other shooting tarps or protective tarps is the fact that the sports screen is motorized so that's a huge difference uh, it actually comes with the remote and all you need to do is push the button and uh, you know it raises it up or lowers it down and that way it allows you to still use your garage to you know to park your cars in and out of and you're not having to get out there get out on the ladder or whatever and roll it up um, like you do with some of the other shooting tarps that are out there so um, fantastic product what I want to do in this video the sports screen itself it, it kind of speaks for itself I don't think I'm gonna have to really sell you on how you know how useful this will be but what I want to do is just kind of show you how I put it together because I think that's the, one of the biggest things that you know you look at it, you go oh, man it's a, it's a motorized motorized deal here um, that must be hard to put together it's actually pretty easy to put together if you know what you're doing and I've kind of went through the whole process already so I want to show you what I did how I mounted it and then a couple tips that might help you along the way so that your mounting process and uh, you know assembly process is a lot more straightforward so let's go ahead we'll cut to that I'm going to show you what comes in the box show you how I put it up and then show you what it looks like kind of in action and, uh, and then we'll go from there Okay, so here's everything that comes with your sports screen. Um, I've kind of unboxed and unraveled everything. So, of course, here's the, the main screen. You can see kind of the size of that. Um, this will fit your standard two-car garage. Uh, then I wanted to start kind of first and foremost. Obviously, you've got your instruction manual. And you're going to want to go through that and especially make sure that you've got all the parts. So, um, you know, obviously this is you know, this is a pretty heavy duty screen and there's a few moving parts just because, you know, it, it does go up and down, it's motorized. So make sure you've got all the parts and then lay them out, make sure you've got everything kind of under control. Um, but then this is kind of everything that we're looking at. So this is the top piece and that's what's gonna kind of house the unit. And then you've got, you know, just, I won't go through every single thing, but this is kind of everything that you're looking at your mounting brackets, um, and then this is a, an optional piece that you can get. It's actually an additional screen, but it's a, you'll, you'll be able to see it when it's unraveled, but it's the, it's the exact size of a goalie, or of a net with a goalie in it. So it's kind of almost like a shooter tutor style deal where you can um, not only use it as a backstop, but as an actual shooting tarp as well. And then this is kind of just all the hardware. You've got your plugs and your remote that's the one of the coolest things about this is it's uh, motorized but it's remote controlled as well uh, your mounting screws all kinds of stuff now for me just kind of give you an idea of where I'm where I'm gonna be mounting this we're in my basement obviously I kept going back and forth on wh where I wanted to mount this um, I used to have my sniper's edge up here and then I was thinking about moving the sniper's edge over to this wall um, but at the end of the day um, for functionality here's what I decided to do I've got these two windows here and as you can see I've taken off the side the side um, stops on my easy goal and I've kind of been using those to uh, block my windows but they're not the greatest and the windows so, actually still can get hit with pucks if you hit it just right so I think what I'm gonna do is after a lot of thought I'm gonna mount it mount the uh, uh, the sports screen on this wall put my sniper's edge back on this wall where it was, but I'm going to change the way I mount that and I'll probably do a different video showing how I do that. Um, there's an easier way to mount them that I've found out about. And then so we'll kind of have these both together. One of my wife's main concerns was, well, is the sports screen going to block the light from coming in on these two windows? And first and foremost, you can see it's kind of the see-through mesh almost. So it may shade the light, but it's not going to completely block it. And worst case scenario, if we do want more sunlight, it's on remote control. So we can just push the button and it'll come up. So that's the plan with this. Now it's time to uh, 
get started and put it all up. Okay, so here's what my setup looks like all put together. Um, so as you can see, and we'll get close-ups on all this, but this is the motorized unit, the motorized end of your head tube. I think that's what they're calling it, the, the basically the big tube that the sports screen wraps around. Um, you can see the plug coming off there. What I'm gonna do eventually, I don't have it plugged in right now, but what I'm gonna do eventually is run that plug up through kind of the rafters and um, have it connect up up top so we can leave it plugged in permanently. Um, as it sits right now, there's no outlet along this side of the wall. So wasn't able to do that yet, but that's fine. I'll still be able to show you what it looks like in actual we'll run an extension cord over here in a bit. Um, let me back up just so you can kind of get an idea of the size of this thing. But uh, this is, like I said, it's a standard two car garage and you can mount it, there's, there's, you can choose which way you want to do this. Um, obviously I'm not using it in a garage, but you can mount it flush kind of on the inside of the garage, you can mount it above the garage, so that's if, you're, if your garage door is slightly too small, then you can mount it you know, to the outside or above it, or directly underneath your, um, I don't even know what you call it, the edge of the roof line there. So um, a lot of different ways to do it. One of the really nice things about the sports screen is it actually still looks good, and you can get optional awnings that go over top of it that kind of conceal the whole unit and you can get these I've seen pictures of them online where you can get them um, actually in the same shade as the trim of your house so it kind of just blends right in and still looks good but still very functional so here's what it looks like the really nice thing about this let me show you kind of the mesh is it's see-through it's a lightweight material but where they've beefed it up so this is it's lightweight but strong and then where they've beefed it up is you know they've put really heavy duty um, so let me get this thing focused here. Really heavy duty bar down in the bottom. So it's actually, it's a metal bar and uh, it's because of that it hangs heavy even though it's a lightweight material. And then to add to it, there's actually a middle bar that goes through. The middle bar is, uh, it's plastic. So it's, it's some sort of PVC I think. Um, but what that does, it makes it so that it's very, like it doesn't give. So I can shoot pucks straight at my window and um, it, it doesn't give, it barely moves, you know, it probably moves probably, I don't know, probably three inches or so, but it doesn't, it's heavy duty enough that it doesn't go all the way in and it's, there's no way it's gonna break my window. Um, and that's shooting directly at it. Well, let's jump here, I put a chair up. Actually, let me show you the, the rest of the unit. I talked about how I was gonna hang my uh, sniper's edge over here, and so I've done that. So basically now we've got two of the walls they're completely safe, safe to shoot at. Um, when I'm using the sniper's edge, that's its target in and of itself. Um, if I ever want to do, you know, like work on posts or something and throw a net in there, then I can just throw the, the net in front of the sniper's edge and then it acts as a backstop. So that's kind of how I'm using it. This is my new setup. If you've seen any of my old videos, you know I had like two by fours connecting the two pieces of wood. Now I've done, uh, actually, there's actually one of our uh, one of our watchers on YouTube that made the comment, hey, why don't you just use chain? And I was like, yeah, that would be a lot easier. So I figured if I was taking the whole thing down anyways, um, I'd do the better setup. It was a lot easier. I actually hung this whole thing, hung both of them myself. Uh, I do recommend if you've got a partner to use it, or if you've got a partner to help you, use your partner. Um, but it can be done alone if you need to. Um, the sniper's edge was really easy to hang by myself with the chains. So that was no problem there. Uh, let me show you this. So what you're going to do is uh, you start with the head, the head tube, the header tube, and this comes in three pieces. I showed you that already. You're going to hook them all together, take the self-tapping screws, screw the pieces so they're not going to come apart. Um, so you fasten them together with the screws, and then um, you're going to move over to your mounting brackets. Now let me show you exactly kind of what we did here. Um, as you can see, I've got, since I was going straight into concrete, my first attempt what I tried to do was uh, I, I thought I could um, buy a concrete drill bit and go straight into it. I think I could have done that, but my drill was just, it was too wimpy for that. So it wasn't, I wasn't making any progress with it. So what I did, I had a carpenter friend um, who, he does framing, and so I knew he had a concrete gun. And I don't know much about this stuff, I just knew this one would work. You may have a better option than this or not, but this is one of those guns where um, basically this is for shooting studs straight into concrete um, when you're framing a basement. And it works with, these are the nails, and then it actually works with shells. So um, I think they're 22 caliber shells. If I'm right, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about this, but uh, I know that it worked. So all you do is load a shell in, load a nail in, 
and then um, put it where you want to put it and fire it in there. So what I did was instead of drilling straight in the concrete, you can see I just hooked up a two by four, tapped it right in with the, uh, with the nail gun, and then I drilled straight into that. And it's really sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Um, easily sturdy enough to hold, hold the unit. Um, also, just kind of a detail, but make sure that you use the cotter pins that come with the, with the setup so that this thing isn't gonna slide out on you eventually. Um, but that's what you do. So you load up the whole thing. You put the, you mount the brackets, measure it out, mark them, mount it, and then um, you've got your header tube already put together. You slot that in, and the same, it's kind of the same setup on the other side. Slot this in, and then the actual tarp attaches with Velcro. So you can see that, it's kind of the Velcro edge there. And it attaches with Velcro and it's longer than it needs to be so you can make adjustments. Um, you know, you can, if you do need to mount it a little bit higher than your garage or whatever, you can make those adjustments. And the Velcro is strong and then since it's wrapped over itself, um, it's not going anywhere. So it's really good. I was, I was really impressed with the engineering on this product. And I just, it's a, it's a fun product to use. It's really nice. So, um, <clears throat> That's the sports screen, what it looks like set up. Now let me show you just over here real quick. Then I'll show you what it kind of looks like up and going up and down. But over here, you can see, I'll try to zoom in here. There's two screws in there. And it comes with a special, um, sports screen comes with a special wrench that will help you, you can stick it in there pretty easily. And these are how you adjust your heights. So you want to adjust how high, like where, where it will stop when it's going up, and you want to adjust where it will stop when it's going down. That way, um, it's all automatic. You don't have to, um, you don't have to stop it manually when you get to the ground. So I've got this set to stop. My garage or my basement floor is slightly uneven, so it's a little bit higher at that end than it is at this end. But I've got it stopping about a quarter inch off the ground at the at this end and then it's probably at the very end there it's about an inch off the ground maybe an inch and a half off the ground but um, all I do is push the down button and it goes down stops right where it needs to stop push the up button it goes up stops right where it needs to stop and it's good to go so let me go ahead I'm going to uh, actually show you what this looks like in action going up and down and then uh, we'll go from there okay so I've got the sports screen plugged in now um, as you can see I took and mounted the the uh, remote bracket right onto my wall here. So that's kind of cool. I mean, you can mount that, keeps the remote safe. Tried to put it high enough that my kids couldn't really reach it. Um, so they'll have to probably grab a chair if they want to do that. But all we got to do now is, see if I can get these both in the picture at the same time, is let's just push up. And there it goes. So you can see it pulling itself up. And as it gets closer to the top, I set it to stop just above the window. So it's not going to roll itself all the way up. There you go. So my automatic stop placement, perfect, just barely, barely above the window. And now we're good to go. Now you've also got your down button, obviously. So we'll let that come back down. And if you decide that if there's some reason that you want it only part way down, then you can just hit the stop. And that's the stop button right in the middle there. So you go up, down, or stop. Um, let's just keep it going all the way down so you can see. It's a really clever design and, you know, I mean, stops right in perfect spot, both on the way up and on the way down. There you go. It makes it so you don't have to get out on the ladder and roll the thing up like you do with some of the other tarps. Um, one thing I did want to point out is on the remote, and this is just, this probably won't apply to most of you, but it could apply to some people. Uh, the remotes usually come pre-programmed. Now, for whatever reason, mine didn't. And so I actually called down to the sports screen and just asked them, you know, what do I do here? And they were really easy. It was, you know, easy to get a hold of them, good to talk to. And they set me straight real quick. But I'm going to show you what they showed me is um, as soon as you plug in your unit, you're going to hear, it's really quiet, but you're going to hear five little beeps. So it's just beep, 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 beep. When you're hearing that beep, all you got to do is while it's still beeping is just hold down the up button. 
That's if, if for some reason your remote comes and it's not working when you're pushing the button. So um, obviously you want to make sure the first thing is that you got the battery plugged in properly. And if you, if you do, then that blue light comes on when you push the button, right? But if, uh, if you're pushing the button, it looks like it should be working and the thing's not moving for you, then you probably need to program your remote. So all you need to do, like I said, plug it in and then while it's still beeping, hold down the up button on your remote and that will, um, that will link it up, sync it up to your sports screen unit and then you'll be uh, programmed and ready to use it. Okay, the last thing I want to show you about the sports screen is an optional feature that you can pick up. It's a life-size uh, goalie target. So um, I'm, what, what it is, is basically it comes in a roll like this and it's got the Velcro on the side. And there's actually a Velcro uh, strip right along the middle of the sports screen. You can kind of see it. Um, and all you do is basically just take, take the life-size goalie, it's a life-size goalie and net, hook it into the Velcro, and then uh, let it drop down. And now you've got your life-size goal, uh, life-size goalie, and then if you want to use it as a target, you can just obviously just work on picking your shots, and uh, it works really well for that. My kids have had a blast with this. Um, you know, they're down here all the time, and uh, you know, shooting. They're using this as a target practice. Um, they're just loving it, and uh, it's really good. Like I said, it's versatile. Lots of stuff you can do with it. I know that they're in the process of making these life-size, uh, life-size targets for baseball and lacrosse as well. So, you know, it's not, you're not, not just locked into, you know, to hockey stuff, um, but pick up whatever sport suits you. And, um, you know, you can use it in that way as well. And one other cool thing about this, I almost forgot to mention, is that since, you know, this is kind of made out of the same material, the, the cutout thing is kind of made out of the same material as the sports screen itself. So um, if you want to leave that permanently set up, you can. This will roll up right with the sports screen. You don't have to worry about taking the goalie off and on and uh, you can just kind of leave it like that. So again, really clever engineering on this, clever design and uh, makes for a very useful, useful product. So that's what it looks like if you're, if you're rolled up with the goalie still attached. And obviously when you want to use it again, just go ahead and bring it right back down. So that's your sports screen. Again, fantastic product. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's really working well for what I needed it for, which is protecting those two windows. And um, you know, definitely something I recommend. So you can pick these up at hockeyshot.com and also make sure you visit us at weisstechhockey.com for your coupon code so you can save some money off your order. Okay, Tyler, what's the best thing about the sports screen? The sports screen, if we hit the windows on accident, it doesn't go through. Watch. Dad, can you grab me a puck? Oh, I'm stuck. You just can't. <laughs> so watch, I'm trying to hit the window. Didn't hit it at all. Oh, that's pretty good. Chase, what's the best thing about the sports screen? What? Look at me. It's the best part the goalie. It's the best so part strong. is the goalie? Yeah. yeah. It's just so strong. Can I shoot? Yeah. It's not going